In this lecture, we're going to discuss metabolism. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is all of the biochemical reactions that must occur in order to sustain life. We have energy demands that must be met in order to continue all of the all of the reactions that are necessary. And so we can build up and break down um, using the different uh, materials that are found within the food that we consume. And so um, the metabolic reactions are divided into two main types. So you have anabolic and catabolic. And so what catabolic means is to break down. So we're breaking down these polymers. With anabolic, we are building up. Okay, so as we've learned, we can use carbohydrates, fats, and proteins as the, as the polymers. And so carbohydrates can be broken down into glucose. And glucose can be used to form what's known as pyruvate. And this reaction, or, so this is a series of reactions that occur in order to produce pyruvate. But what this is known as is glycolysis. So we're lysing glucose and producing pyruvate. And so we can also produce glucose through a process known as glycogen O lysis. And so what glycogen is, it's these long chains of glucose. Um, there's also branching um, in this glucose molecule that uh, is, can be stored in muscle and liver. And so, um, for instance, during exercise, like you, this is what's used um, as a short-term uh, short energy, energy source in order to meet the energy demands. And so what about fats? So with fats, we have, uh, fats are broken down into fatty acids and also glycerol. So these fatty acids can be loaded to a molecule known as acetyl OA. And this reaction, so in general it's lipolysis the lysing of lipids, but more specifically, it's known as beta oxidation. Okay, well, what about proteins? So proteins are broken down into amino acids. Okay, and these amino acids can be converted to pyruvate. So in order for pyruvate to form, what needs to occur is known as deamination and translamination. And what this means is that we can either remove this amine group or we can transfer this amine group. And so reactions where this occurs, it happens in the urea and also the Krebs cycle. And so as you can see here, we can use the, the um, we can use pyruvate in order to make acetyl-CoA. And then what acetyl-CoA does is it gets fed into the Krebs cycle, and then we get up, we get our NADH, which is then used in the electron transport chain, and we produce our highest yield of ATP. Okay, so these are the catabolic reactions. What about some of the anabolic reactions? Well, we can also use pyruvate to reverse this process and form glucose. So this here, this process is known as gluconeo, Genesis. 
because we're forming we're forming new glucose. Um, also, the reverse of um, glycogenolysis is a process known as glycogenesis. Okay, so we have glucose, carbohydrates, and now let's go back to fats. And so the reverse of this process, we can use acetyl-CoA to form more fatty acids. So this is the reverse. And so this process is known as, well, generally speaking, it's lipogenesis. More specifically, it's fatty acid synthesis. What about um, amino acids? And so with amino acids, we can use these amino acids to form more proteins. So we can use a highly regulated process known as translation. And so one thing about um, with amino acids is that uh, within cells there has to be a certain range and known as the amino acid pool in order to um, be able to synthesize all of the necessary proteins. And so I uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture and learned about metabolism.